Even the most lovely places can harbor ghostly pasts. The haunting tales of the Springer Opera House in Columbus, Georgia have spanned many years. Who roams the halls with the guests before performances? Who spooks the crew behind the stage? And who's the girl on the balcony? The Springer Opera House sits at 103 10th Street in downtown, or as the locals call it, Uptown Columbus, a short distance from the breathtaking view of the Chattahoochee River. The Springer first opened on February 21, 1871, and was named the State Theater by Governor Jimmy Carter on its 100th anniversary. It's a truly stunning place with tall Corinthian columns and stained glass windows, a picturesque piece of late 19th century architecture. Many prominent people cross the Springer stage, from choreographers, actors, dancers, to politicians. Even Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States, delivered speeches there. I lived in Columbus for a few years, and I never heard about the ghostly encounters people experienced at the theater. But I can certainly see the allure. Such a stately, elegant place would make for an interesting haunt. There have been rumors that a helpful designer hovers in the costume room, hoping to lend a hand when needed. There have been tales of cold spots. In some rooms, all the items must be kept exactly where they are or the spirits will move them back when no one's looking. According to Faith Seraphin in the book Haunted Columbus, Georgia, a New York couple was preparing for a performance when the woman was tapped on the shoulder. Her husband said it wasn't him who tapped her. Could it have been someone else who cued her on stage? The Springer has been home to ghosts since the beginning, it seems. One of the stories circulated is that of a young girl who fell to her death from one of the upstairs balconies. According to an article by the Travel Channel, an actress named Jenny Marshall was performing in The Wizard of Oz and had a sudden, overwhelming feeling of fear when she was in her dressing room one night. She was admiring The Wizard of Oz figurines she'd been gifted when the lights began flickering and the whole place went black. The air turned to ice. She was paralyzed with horror. When the lights came back on, all the figurines had been knocked over except for one. The Wicked Witch of the West stood ominously staring back at her. It's believed that the ghost of Edwin Booth still haunts the Opera House as well. There's a legend that says he'll stay there until Hamlet a role he played there in 1870, graces the Springer stage again. By most accounts, he's playful, especially with the female crew and guests, and he's known to frequent the prop room. I'm still amazed at how well-preserved and beautiful the Springer is. It's truly a local treasure. Even though many city officials and people who work at the Springer don't speak of the otherworldly happenings there, it wouldn't surprise me if some of these colorful characters decided to return there, enjoying the shows and perhaps even making their own special appearances now and then. Either way, the Springer Opera House is a place to see if you're ever in Columbus. The productions are wonderful and the place is exquisite. It's a gem with a marvelous past. 